Hi everyone, my name is Giovanna Prince and today we're going to talk about Happy to Connect of CS50 Introduction to Database with SQL of CS50 SQL. So in this exercise, we're going to work with designing the database. So we're going to create our database, we're going to add the tables, we're going to add the columns with their types and their constraints, everything we saw in the lecture. All right, this exercise in here, we don't have any source code to start. We're going to start everything from scratch. So let's take a look at the idea. We're going to build a database to store all the connections we have in our LinkedIn. So in LinkedIn, we have the users, the companies, the schools, and we need to do the relationship between users, between users and schools and users and companies. So this is what we're going to do. To start, let's create here a folder called connect that this is the name they are telling us. And I'm going to create a file called schema.sql. Okay, then we have we're going to write all of our commands in here. But before we write our command, we need to open up the terminal and we're going to create our database. They teach us here how to create the database. So we're going to copy this command that is sqlite3connect.db. The connect.db will be the file with the database. Then here it will ask us, I will say yes. And if you see here, we just created our database that it's empty. We have no column inside. If we do dot schema, we don't have any tables, any column at all. Okay, now let's just start implementing the first table. So here they are telling us users. The heart of LinkedIn platform is its people. Your database should be able to represent the following information about LinkedIn users. Their first name and last name, the username, password. And we need to keep in mind that if a company is following best practice, the application passwords are hashed. And this idea of hashing is making the password encrypted. So we cannot see exactly what is the password, but we're kind of doing some changes in a way that anyone can hack. But for the purpose of this exercise, we're going to store the password right away. Okay, to represent the users, I created here a diagram where we can see our user table. These other tables we're going to implement in the future, but let's take a look at this pink table. Every table must contain an ID. So an ID is a primary key that will tell us each row that we have. So for example, I am creating the person Giovanna, Giovanna Proença, that it's me. The Giovanna Proença user has ID 1. If I'm doing Leo Prado, it will be ID 2. So every person, every information we're going to store in our table will have a unique ID. So this is a way we can store information as SQL understands. So we're going to have an ID that's an integer, we're going to have the first name that is a text, last name that, that it's a text, username it's a text and we cannot add a constraint that it's unique and we have password that it's a text because the password can contain letters, numbers and special characters. Okay, so as we saw in the lecture, this is how we create a table. We say create table, the name of the table, parenthesis, name of the column, type of the column and so on. So let's just start implementing. So here, create table, users, open up the parentheses and it already gives us the tab. So the first table, the first column I want to create is the, int, the ID that it's an integer. Then I want to create the first name that it's a text. Then I want to create the last name that it's another text. Then I want to create the username that it's a text and the username must be unique. So I will add here the constraint that the username must be unique. If someone tries to insert a, a username that already exists, we will avoid that because of this constraint. So if I have my user Giovanna SP, no one else can have this username. And we have password, oops, password that it's a text as well. Once we implement the name of all columns, we need to add our constraint of what is our primary key. And as we can see in here, we write this sentence, primary key, parenthesis, and the name of the column that is the ID. In our case, the name of our column is ID, so we just need this primary key in here. All right, after the sentence, we should add a semicolon. Now let's go to the next one. So schools and universities. LinkedIn also allows for official schools or universities account, such as Doors Coding School, so alumni can identify their affiliation. Ensure that LinkedIn database can store the following information about each school. The name of the school, the type of the school, so Doors Coding School, Coding Bootcamp, the school's location and the year in which the school was founded. So we need to add those information in our table. To do that, I created here a table called schools. Again, we need an ID. Every table must have an ID that it's an integer. The name will be a text. The school type will be a text. Location, it's a text. And founding year will be an integer because we can't have a year 2023.8, right? We need to be unique in here. So to do that, I'm going to create table schools. And I'm going to have here an ID that it's an integer. We're going to have the name that it's a text. We're going to have, let me see here, the school type that it's a text. We're going to have location that it's another text. And we're going to have found, I think it's foundation 
founding year, founding year, that it's an integer, okay? And again, we need to set our primary key and we're good to go. Now let's go to the next one, which is company. So you, LinkedIn allows companies to create their own pages like YouTube or LinkedIn itself. So employees can identify their past or current employment with the company. Ensure that LinkedIn database can store the following information for each company. The name of the company as YouTube, the company's industry as technology, for example, and the company's location like uh, Silicon Valley. I don't know exactly what is the location for YouTube, but this is it. So to do that, I created another diagram here so we can see the data. Again, the company's table must contain an ID that is an integer, the name that is a text, industry that is a text, and the location that is a text as well. So I'm going to create, oops, create table companies and we're gonna have an ID that it's an integer we're gonna have name that it's a text we're gonna have industry that it's a text and we're gonna have location that is a text and again we need to set the primary key as our constraint all right let me double check that's it now let's go to the next one connections the essence of LinkedIn is its ability to facilitate connections between people ensures LinkedIn's database can support each of the following connections so let's work for with the connection between people. The database should be able to represent mutual two-way connections between users. No need to worry about one-way connections such as A following B without B following user A. Here we're gonna create only one row in our table to say that A and B follows each other, all right? How can we do that? We should build a new table called user connection that is this one in the middle. Instead of saying that Giovanna follows Leo, we can use the ID of Giovanna that is 18 and the ID of Leo that is one and we can say that 18 and one follow each other. Other. All right, so this simplifies and we follow the rules established in the lecture of CS50. Okay, so we're going to build this connection here, user connections. So let's do this together. So I'm going to say create table user connections. We're going to have a user ID 1 that will be an integer and we're going to have a user ID 2 that will be another integer. Actually, I'm going to call user 1 ID just to make things better and user 2 ID. Okay? What will be our primary key? Here we don't have an ID specifically for the table itself, but we 